Welcome to Airplay. Well, we're finishing off another great season. We have one more show for you next week, and it's Determined Women. And I'm here with a very special guest, my little granddaughter, Ellie, who's not even two years old yet. Do you remember what that was like? Of course. Anyhow, we have a really good show for you today. And my wonderful co-host, Podmini, will introduce the play the playwright and the players thank you very Agreed. much Connie. thank you so the synopsis of today's play is as follows linda is currently receiving counseling in her psychiatrist's office when her multiple personalities start to interrupt the sessions as Dr. Walker attempts to maintain control. Linda has to gain control over her personality so she won't be committed to a mental institution and lose custody of her own children to child welfare. Bertie tries to assist Dr. Walker, but Linda doesn't trust her. So, the playwright is Vivian Dorsett. Vivian is a college instructor and has produced and directed theater at a collegiate and community level. Her most recent acting debut in community theater was Vagina Monologues. Most of her playwriting is based on social justice and represents marginalized populations. The actors in today's show are Carrie Weslowski, reading Linda, a career woman with multiple personalities, Penny, a surly teenager, and Veronica, an angry, aggressive adult. Born and raised in NYC, Carrie is a co-host of Airplay and regular contributor to Airplay as actor-director. Carrie's recent credits include directing the opera, The Bird Lady at the National Opera, opera Center, playing Mandy in Theater for the New Cities, Dermalogic, and directing and playing the female lead, Destiny, in Simon Says, a finalist in Playbill VTF Live and Manhattan Reps uh, Stories Film Festival. Upcoming projects include supporting roles as Helen Hayes or Julia in Connie Keffinger's Live from the Bardo, My Dinner with Mary in January 2022 at Theater for the New City in NYC, directed by the legendary Dan Carter. Beth Griffith, reading Birdie, um, uh, play, who is Linda's uh, biological mother, who has a seventh grade education and has been emotionally absent throughout Linda's life. Beth has performed with Here Art Center, La Mama, NYTW, New Ohio Theater, New York City Opera, International Wow, Clubbed Thumb, the New Georgia's uh, Medicine Show Theater, Theater for the New City, 
New York Workshop Theater Arts, Nova's Makers Labs, Music We'd Like to Hear in London, Sachio Ito's Dance Japan and the Flea, upcoming performances uh, are with the Hearth Crossways Theater, Broadway Bound Festival, and Out of the Box Theater, Matt Matthews reads Dr. Walker, the psychiatrist. Matt immigrated to California from Texas many years ago. He is an actor, singer, theater director, choral director, and voice for hire. Recent Zoom projects include Dermalogic as Stansfield and Yellow Ribbons as director. Some favorite roles are Marley's Ghost in A Christmas Carol and Grameo in Taming of the Shrew. Good afternoon, Linda. Come on in. Hello, Dr. Walker. I have a lot to sort through today, so I'll get right to the point. Begrudgingly, I left Birdie a message on her cell phone. If I am to be admitted into a mental institution, then I think my Birdie should be a part of my counseling. She called back, but I couldn't answer. I froze. Do you mind listening to the voicemail she left me and maybe we can process some things? Not at all. If you wish me to do so, I will. And if you want to discuss, well, we can start with that. Thanks. Uh, hey, kid. This is your mother calling you back. Um, I got your message. So you really think a nut house is what you need? I mean... You can't really trust doctors. You know, if you go to a nut house, they might try and take those kids. I hope they don't take your kids. Of course, you could always take them to a church like I did. I did. Mother calling you back. Um, I got a message. Mm -hmm. So you really think a nut house is what you need? I mean, you can't really trust doctors. You know, if you go to a nut house, they might try and take those kids. I hope they don't mm. take your kids. Of course, you could always take them to a church like I did. I did the best thing for you so you could have a better life. Uh, I'm not so sure I can do that counselor thing. You know, counselors always trying to twist things. Oh, uh, well, I gotta go. If you have a little extra money, you could send me a couple of 20s. That would be great. Got, gotta go, kiddo. Be careful out there. Will you excuse me for a moment? Where's the ladies' room? Uh, just right out the door and to your left. Thanks. Just take your time. I'll be right here. Thank you. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding fences for so long. Mm. Hey, uh, Linda? Linda? Penny? Penny? Penny, please put that away or I'll have to ask you to leave again. Do you still want to start today's conversation with the phone call? 
phone call. I changed my mind. I'll take as long as we can talk about something besides relationships. There are other things to talk about in the world besides relationships. Well, what subject would you like to discuss today? Music. Hmm? Music. Music and walking. Hmm. I like to go walking and listen to my music. <laughs> and what do you feel like? Uh, what do you feel you accomplish when you're listening to music and walking? Accomplish? I just go for the exercise, Doc. Exercise. Interesting. Exercise can calm a person. Is there um, any special place you like to go walking, Penny? I like to go for long walks. Mm. Walks in the woods or in a huge field where the cows graze. And when, when do you go on these walks? What kind of question is that? Everyone just walks when they feel like walking. Why does there have to be some big issue about it? I go on walks and listen to my music. I don't want to talk about it. Penny, now I, I don't think that there is a big issue about walking or listening to music, and we don't have to talk about relationships at this moment. Well, let's change the subject. Let's talk about the message from your mother. Did that message from your mother um, upset you? I'm done, Doc. Today's session is officially over. Mm. Oh, you're a hard one. I know you got your reasons. Things that please you can hurt you somehow. So my apologies for that interruption, Linda. Um, we were discussing yesterday's phone conversation, and then you left my office. I believe you were upset about your mother's phone call. Phone call. I, I, you left the room after hearing that that call, and uh, and when you came back, well, I was speaking to Penny. I want to finish that conversation, but we have to discuss the possibility of your admittance into the mental hospital and what plans you have for your children while you're there. Now, the court order only gives us a, a couple of weeks, so a short time. It's a short time to get your personal affairs in order before you're admitted. I go walking because I want to be alone. Excuse me? No, oh, Penny. I go walking Penny? and listen to my music sometimes when I'm mad. I don't feel like being around people or talking when I'm mad. So I go for a walk. I figure walking is better than throwing fits, kicking in doors, or throwing things across the room or, you know, all the way out there. Or what, Penny? Are, are you still with me? Penny? I know what I said. Throwing something is better than hitting someone. Uh, so, can you tell me, why do you want to hit someone? Why not communicate with them by talking? Communication. <laughs> There's a joke. Doesn't communication happen between two or more people? Mm. I don't get communication, and I don't give communication. No one communicates with me especially at home. Who is no one? My house parents. House parents? Yeah. House parents, foster parents, you know, the people that take care of me, my guardians or whatever you want to call them. None of them ask me what I want. What do you want, Penny? Do you want to go in the hospital and work on your mental health? I want to be involved in decisions about me. What type of decisions? Like where I want to go, where I want to live. It's like I'm a machine, and as long as I follow all the rules, then everyone's happy. Mm. I go to school, I make my bed, I clean my room, I do my chores, I don't curse, I don't drink, I don't wear shorts. Except 
<laughs> when we sneak out at night, I wear a stupid dress every Sunday for God's day. See, finally I could say what I want and talk about how I feel and no one arrests me or corrects me. Every Sunday, a dress. Now how stupid is that? I don't like dresses. I mean, do you really think God gives a sh God gives a flip if I wear a dress on Sunday or not? Besides, by the time we get home from morning church and eat and clean up and take a nap and go back to church Sunday night, the entire day is gone anyway. So who cares if girls wear dresses on Sundays? Of course, this is one Sunday we don't have to take a nap. That's on visitation Sunday. Now there's a beautiful day. Visitation Sunday? What, what is that? <laughs> yeah. You don't know much for a doctor. <laughs> I thought doctors knew everything. At the children's home, Visitation Sunday is the second Sunday of every month. That's the time we get to spend with our real family when they come to visit us at the Haven. The Haven? Christ Haven, the children's home where I live. <clears throat> Visitation Sunday is the second Sunday of each month from two to four o'clock. So see, on these days, we don't have to take a nap, but I still have to wear a stupid a dress. I want to thank you for not cursing when it's your turn to talk, Penny. <clears throat> I still had to wear a stupid dress. I didn't have to take a nap on Visitation Sunday, except. Except. <laughs> Penny. Penny. Except. When no family comes to visit on Visitation Sunday. I'm confused. Do you mean you, you, you don't have to wear a dress on those days or you don't take a nap on those days? Uh, Penny, do you think that I could speak with Linda now? You're not listening. Isn't this counseling all about communication? No, I still must wear a stupid dress on visitation Sundays. I'm talking about taking a nap. Usually on Sunday, we must take a nap. But on visitation Sundays, we don't have to take a nap because we get to visit with our real family. But if our real family doesn't come to visit, then I want to take a nap to pass the time. Oh, God. You see, if you don't get the phone call by 2.15 telling you to go to the front of campus, to the gym, then they, you know, there ain't no visitors to see you. Then the phone hangs it up. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody there to visit you. No real family to visit you. Ain't that sad? All we get is two hours a month. 24 hours to see our family. 24 hours. One full day a year to see good old mom dad or your my sisters and brother don't get me wrong it's great if they show up but if they don't show up i just go take a nap helps the pain penny i don't know everything about you or what you went through i know that you live at christ haven right that's the orphanage um where there are probably a lot of rules and I know that they are your guardians and that you have house parents that live with you and take care of you. But I do not know how you feel about all of this until you communicate your thoughts and your feelings to me. Now, I believe that yesterday's message from your mother, well, it triggered you. It's not an orphanage. It's a children's home. Let me clue you in. Orphans are different. 
like Annie in the movie. Nobody wants an orphan. I have a brother and five sisters who want me and they lived here at the children's home too. We have cottages we live in, just like a house, not some big dorm building. I have red hair, but my name ain't Annie. And just because I live in a children's home don't mean I'm a nobody. Orphans are nobodies. I am somebody. Penny, you are somebody. You're, you're, you're someone important. Now, look, I've never said any different in our sessions. I think if you would consider entering the hospital as soon as possible, working on your mental health, then you can focus on getting better. Once you draw the queen of diamonds, boy, she'll beat you if she's able. You know, the queen of hearts is always your best friend. See you tomorrow, Doc, when I feel better. All right. Good afternoon, Linda. It's good to see you. Now, today we need to finalize your plans for your admittance date and the family plan for your children. The court order only gives us two more weeks and they want an answer. Before we get started on plans, I would like to read this letter I received from my mother yesterday. All right. Linda, L-E-N-D-A. She spelled my name wrong. She bore me and named me, and she spelled my name wrong. Linda. Uh, hey, kiddo. I got that money you sent, thanks. I paid the gas bill. Mm, mm. Now I can have a little heat for a while longer. You know, your grandma's house is so old and cold, but at least I'm not homeless no more. Hope you're doing well, kiddo. I really do. Um, I wanna tell you, I think you should go to that mental place. I, I wish I could help you. Maybe you could get your sisters to help you with them kids. It could do you some good to take a break <clears throat> from them kids. Uh, I guess you should go so they don't take your kids away. You don't want that. I mean, you don't want them kids put in an orphanage like I was. No, I didn't put you kids in no orphanage. I made sure the church took care of you. I did what was right. I didn't leave you in no orphanage like my mom did me. Uh, I just wanted the best for you kids because I love you. I'm sorry I can't be there. Just uh, things are hard for me right now. Mm. I'm just a little bit sad. You remember my old friend, Charlie Brown? Charlie died the other day. Well, maybe you could come visit me when you're out. Remember, I love you, kiddo. I don't know what I'd do if something happened to you kids. Mom. Sadness, love. <laughs> Everyone wants me to feel sad for them. Let me tell you what sad is. Sad is being left all alone over and over again. You get your first boyfriend and you think, wow, love is great and I finally love someone and they love me and never be alone again. You think they love you? The word love is easy to say. Parents say it, siblings say it, the world says it. It just rolls off your tongue like it means something. See, love. 
<laughs> Everyone says it and then they leave. <laughs> now, Veronica. Veronica Love, I, I can tell that that word well, it upsets you, it makes you sad. Not, Veronica? Not anymore. It makes me angry. So you relate love to hate or anger? I'll love you to the moon and back again. I mean, men, of course. I, I do not love girls like that even though the thought of loving a girl doesn't sound all that bad sometimes. But people, especially men, hurt you every time. They tell you they love you and then they break up with you. And two weeks later, you see the new girlfriend sitting next to him in the church pew. Then there's the other boyfriend who got you pregnant and doesn't want you anymore. And six months later, he gets married and has a wife. And they're having a baby together. And you're raising his baby all by yourself. That must hurt. Yes, it hurts for a little while. Then I turn pain into anger. Pain. Just because a man don't want to be your boyfriend? You call that pain? Really? Isn't Veronica a little insecure? Beautiful girl like Veronica should have more confidence in herself. After all, there are more fish in the ocean. Yes, but every fish has its own way to swim. My Aunt Rena told me that. My Uncle Jink is the only person she ever loved. My Aunt Rena died of cancer a few years ago. She's the only relative besides my siblings that kept in touch with me through my lifetime. She meant more to me than my own mother or father. I hadn't seen her in a few months and when I did go to visit her, she was on her deathbed and died a few weeks later. Not only did I go to her funeral and have to deal with these feelings, her brother, my ignorant bio father arrives, not for the funeral, but the, for the family luncheon afterwards. He's so selfish. He either just wanted a free meal or wanted to see what valuables he left behind. You mentioned feelings. With the loss of Rena and, and seeing your father after so long, you know, it's all right to feel. Feel. I try not to feel. Life is less painful that way. Well, I think that you do feel. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here having this conversation and trying to work a family plan for your mental health and for your children. But can we talk about your admittance into the hospital and the family plan? You may be right, Doc. Maybe I do feel. Well, anyway, we all went back to the house after the pathetic graveside funeral prepared by my last living uncle and his wife. I went outside the house to get something out of my car. When I stepped off the porch, I heard voices around the side of the house. So I walked around the corner of the house to see if maybe it was relatives I had never met. And was I ever surprised? He was the one relative I could have cared less if I ever saw again. Just as I walked around the corner, we met. He met me face to face. There stood my father. I hadn't seen him in at least 12 years, mm. with those piercing blue eyes staring directly into mine. He was holding a lit cigar in his hand. A disgusting cigar smell. And do you know what he did or didn't do? He didn't say a word to me, not one single word. He just did an about face and turned around and walked away, walked away without saying a word to me. So you were hurt because he didn't speak to you? Hurt? I don't know. All I know is I didn't deserve that. He did. He deserved me walking away from him. He deserved me not saying a word to him. He deserved that humiliation, that pain. How dare that idiot make me feel that way? 
So you do feel? If you consider hate a feeling, I guess so. I think you feel more than you want to admit. How do you know what she feels? You're a man. You don't know how women feel. Veronica. Don't interrupt me. You're a man and you're all the same. You don't really want to hear what women have to say. <clears throat> oh, you'll listen for a few minutes. Just enough to pacify us. So you can get what you really want. So you can get close to us and use us. Admit it, Doc. That's all you men really want. You're a man. All you want is for us to keep our opinions to ourselves, our mouths shut, except for when... Uh, 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 Veronica, please, please, please stay uh, seated uh, there. Stay seated. Is that what you want me to do? Hmm. That's not very demanding. Are you sure that's all you want from me, Mr. Man? I mean, you're a real man, aren't you? Don't you want a little more conversation? This is, this is not about me. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Oh, yes, it is. You're a man. Don't you sit there pretending to be interested in what women are saying. And all the while you're thinking in the back of your head what it would be like to F us. No, look, please, please, just, 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 just calm down for a few minutes. Oh, come on, Doc. Don't you want to play? What's the matter? Got to have a cigarette? Cigars. That's what old, bald, fat men like. <clears throat> Not cigarettes. Amazing how they can walk, talk, smile, and everything else with that disgusting cigar hanging in the corner of their mouth. Looking like it's been in the same spot for days on end, not even ever lighting it. That smell, that sickening smell in those blue eyes. Mm. Her breath, my goodness, that disgusting smell makes me sick. You're hard. You're a hard one. There's always a rainbow above. You better let somebody love you. You better let somebody love you. You better let somebody love you before it's too late. Penny, Penny, Penny. Don't touch me. Well, excuse me. I, I was just, I was just trying to get Linda's attention. Um, Linda needs to join us. We have decisions to make and, and, and plans to discuss. I told you from the beginning, I don't want to talk about this. Penny. Talk about what? We need to talk about your future and make a decision before we leave here today. My daddy. My daddy's handsome. He has these beautiful blue eyes, just like me. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember much about him, but I love him. It is good to love him. We can discuss this while, while you're admitted into the hospital. Love, I, I try not to feel. It's less painful that way, but I, I know that he loves me. Mm -hmm. Just because the word love comes into a relationship doesn't mean anything, right? Men think because they tell us they love us that we're supposed to melt inside. 
Well, I didn't melt. I shut myself off sort of like an out of body experience. I just lay there and take my mind somewhere else. This will help me to try and forget. I forget some things sometimes. Oh, but the blue eyes. That's why I never date men with blue eyes. I try to love a man once that had blue eyes. We even got married, but I couldn't. I couldn't, it made me sick to be near my own husband. It wasn't his fault. He tried, he tried to understand and well, our relationship just didn't work. So I had to go, go. Where did you go? There's no place to go, no place to run. But pain stays with you. It's always somewhere there in the depths of your mind. You try to forget the memories, but you don't forget. You never forget. You might suppress them until something or someone comes along in it. All those old memories, the bad memories resurface. If I chose to think about it, there would be plenty to remember. This, the smell, the breath. I was too little to get away from him. I was just a child. That's why when I see a man and a little girl, I always wonder, wonder if she is daddy's little girl like I was. I wonder. It's funny, even though I don't remember much about my daddy, I remember I didn't like him being too close to me. He made me sick to my stomach. Linda, Linda, look, I need to talk with you. There's a lot to digest here, and our time is running out. I don't want to talk about it. I, I don't want to think about him. I don't want to think about Bertie. So I stay busy. I just send them on their way. I'm a single mother and a very successful career woman, and I'm important. I'm somebody. My father abused me. My mother only existed. She was never emotionally present. I can't think about what happened so long ago. I let Veronica deal with that. Deal with it, I do. I love to socialize. I love to love and be the center of attention with Mr. Man. I'll be all around you and tell you what you want to hear. But don't ask me to give me your heart because that will never happen. And uh, your life sounds like it's filled with too much stress at the moment. I'm going to submit the paperwork for your immediate admittance so that we can work on your mental health together and, and you will be under 24 hour watch. Stressful. I just go for a walk. Uh, good afternoon. Um, may I speak with Dr. Thompson? This blood of all you can get no Hello, Dr. Thompson. Blood. Yes, this is Dr. Walker. Your pain and your hunger, they're driving you. Well, I believe I have enough to write the order and that we should proceed immediately with uh, Linda's admittance. Walking in this life. No, no, not two weeks. Linda will be admi admitted immediately. Yeah. Right away. Fournette, May 3rd, 2000. Thanks for listening. Join us next week on Airplay. Thank you.